Hi, Rigsters here, and I'm here with uh, yet another series, this time on Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. This is a game where you can do a campaign, design a car in a sandbox, and just even just the engine in a sandbox setting. And the game is more stat-based and stuff, but this game also partnered with a game that I'm going to be showing after I design the car here in the future, a uh, BeamNG car game. You can export what you design in this game and you can put it in BeamNG and drive it around. So why don't I design a new car real quick here. I'm going to just show you a little bit of uh, what I'm going to be doing. So for this build, you can also increase or decrease the model year. It goes up to 2020 because it starts from 19... 50 I believe is the lowest year. It takes a little while for it to load. I think it was 19, yeah, just after uh, World War II, 1946 to 2020. I want to make a 2020 car. And we're going to do, let's see here, let's get rid of sedan, wagon, hatchback. There's so many trims and stuff you can modify and do. You can like shape and form the vehicle. You can change it to what you want it to look like. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a short wheelbase pickup truck from 1995. <laughs> now, it's in the campaign, uh, if you were to play this in there, this body build would be obsolete for safety standards and it would pay a massive style and penalty fee. And we're going to name it, uh, we're going to name this Rig I3R. And that's a little bit of a hint of what's yet to come for what I'm going to do for this truck. So here's where you can select the panel material, chassis type, material for the chassis, where you want the engine placed in what way, like do you want it traverse or longitudinal? Long, long ways is basically the engine's formed like straight and traverse means it's tilted on the side. What kind of suspensions once I start selecting the material? Do you want like a really sporty suspension or do you want one that's good for off-road and carrying this is going to be a interesting truck i'm not going to i'm just going to just keep going along here and i'll show you what i'm going to do so you can do all sorts of different materials oh look at that now this used to not exist in the game where if you click on the panel material this used to not change your look of the vehicle when I first, I played this game years ago, so the props to them for adding the panel material actually show in this Unreal Engine. It used to be on what's called a key engine. That was the old original engine. This game is an indie game, so they started off pretty small. And I'm really glad I got this game back in high school. I used to play this game a lot back in high school, designing cars and stuff. And waiting for that, uh, this engine to release a few years ago. Oh man, they've done a great, fantastic job. Highly recommend this game. Even if you're not much into designing cars, if you want to learn how to design one on the cheap, this is definitely one of those niche games you can really get into. And there's also like a question mark here that gives you more information or basic information about what the material does. Like it'll say like some of the history a little bit and the downsides and pros and cons. And here's some stats. This is not an issue because it's a sandbox, but this is where you would pay attention to like stuff, stuff as engineering time and all that neat stuff. I'm not going to be talking too much about that because this is a sandbox, so we're not worried about engineering time at all. I think I'm going to make it fiberglass because it looks weird. And fiberglass is actually pretty light. I think it's lighter than aluminum. Partial aluminum is actually even heavier. I think the only material lighter is carbon fiber, but I want to make this for the people. I want to do a really retro race truck. That's what I'm going to be doing. And the chassis type is going to be, let's see here. There's different types. The chassis is like the shell underneath all this. Ladder is the oldest and is most useful for like pickup trucks and heavy vehicles. 
monocoque is what most vehicles for average consumer are being made nowadays. Much safer, much lighter. Space frame is kind of an older but lighter material. There's still uh, vehicles being made at that, but more of like niche vehicles. And light truck monocoque. I don't know what the difference between that and monocoque is. Let's see real quick here. Uh, let's see here. What's the difference between that when I click on light truck? Oh, I see. Monocoque front cab and ladder frame. Yeah, let's do that because I might want to carry a little bit in the back. Now, the chassis material, that's like the inner workings around here. Let's make that advanced high strength steel. That is modern. And most cars nowadays either use that or corrosion resistant. There are now also some cars using light advanced high strength steel. Basically, high str advanced high strength steel uses a lot of different bits and parts to make it lighter but stronger. It's kind of like they try to get close to what carbon fiber does, but a much cheaper scale. And much easier to make, too. So, let's make the engine front longitudinal. And for the front suspension, there's many different types of effects to handling and load capacity. That's basically what they do. We're going to go with McPherson strut. This is a simple basic one. And on the rear, I like how the chassis disappears, too. That used to not be in the game years ago. Uh, hmm. Push rod would be memes. That's like high end sports car stuff. Well, I've seen trucks now use multi link and soil solid axle leaf. I'm gonna go with uh, double wishbone. Because I think. What does it carry more? Oh, it does carry a little more. So let's go with multi link. Let's go a little more expensive. And let's make a new engine. This is the engine designer aspect. So let's do a new project. And we'll call it the I3R, hmm, more a creative name, uh, Super, <laughs> very creative with the names, Variant 1, yeah, let me uh, rename the trim, name this one, um, I3 Race, yeah, because this is going to be, if you, some of the gearheads out there are quickly recognize I'm going to be using an inline three. <laughs> yep, that's right. We're going to make a truck then with an inline three, because why not? Name this MI3 R Super M1. This also is very handy for if you want to like use this engine on other vehicles, you can like do that in the sandbox. So the smallest engine, of course, in the game right now is the inline three. You can do four, six for that. You can do V's for 6, 8, 12. Now, if you had DLC, you could, and if you were a really early bird, you could get a V16, but I don't see any point in that. It is cool, though. So, the block material, this is basically what this stuff is made out of right here. Uh, this does affect the weight and performance, so let's make it uh, aluminum silicon, make it light. And for the heads, that's the stuff up here. Let's make that, uh, hmm. let's make it overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. Because we want a little bit of efficiency and power and make the head material the same. At least hopefully have some performance. And yeah, let's have some variable valve timing with variable valve lift. That basically allows you to do two profiles and have like a switch over point. And for the crank, we'll do forged steel, and I guess we could do heavy duty forged and standard forged. You can change the con rods, which are this part right here, and the pistons, which are inside the engine, over here. We'll go with the next. And this is where it gets important. Compression is how much compression of fuel you want to set it to. Too high and the engine detonates too low and it's not efficient. There's more to it than just that. I'm just giving a brief overview of this stuff. And I definitely want to do all the variable valve tech as well. And let's make the cams a little racy. Let's do, let's make the profile 85 and make it 75. Yeah, let's start out with that. I'm not going turbocharger because that would take too long anyways. It takes a lot of optimization. I want to do naturally aspirated. So we'll do direct injection maybe. Nah, I'll just do multi-port. 
I don't like direct injection for this build. Single intake standard and regular run it run on 91 octane regular gas. And it's giving you a hint right here of the fuel mixture. Uh, lower is potentially better fuel economy. Whereas if you increase the fuel mixture, you can get a little more performance out of it. It plays a big deal. And for the rev run there, let's start off with 5,000. And ignition, let's make it 55. And for the exhaust tube settings, I usually use short caster tubular. Long tubular is like if you want to do more uh, like free or falling exhaust. Race tubular looks like this. It's ridiculous. No long-term production though. It's very for like hypercars and stuff. Long tubular is usually the biggest you can do before it really constricts your production in the campaign. So I'm going to do tubular exhaust. Yeah, let's make it uh, about three and a half. Let's start off with that. And we want to be a little bit concerned for the environment. So let's do a three-way cat converter. Let's do a reverse fall on the first side of the muffler. And on the second, that affects noise as well. So let's see what it sounds like here. And then you can also do automatic testing, which automatically does it. So, I think the exhaust might be too big. So let's lower that a little bit to get more flow, because it it's like too free flowing, so let's make it as small as possible. Yeah, I think two inch would be fine there. So let's do some optimizing here. Let's raise the web limiter just a little more. See how high we can go before it starts yelling at me. So let's raise it to 6,000 maybe? Oh, they're still gaining power. So let's keep going. Let's see when it stops raising by a significant amount. Yeah, it seems like 8,000 is the limit, so let's make it at 8,000. A little free or forward exhaust. Let's make it 2.75 inches. This is how you troubleshoot and make your engine better performing. So let's raise the compression a little bit too. Let's get that higher up. That way it can get more use out of this fuel. Let's make the cam profiles just a little bit more aggressive. And the base cam maybe just a little less, so I could get a little more foot pounds of torque. It's actually making a good amount of power uh, for this build. Let me make the engine just a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, and it'll start knocking when you raise the engine uh, size in or in stroke because it, you'll have to play around with the compression because the compression can be set too high. So let's make it just a little bit bigger of a three cylinder. Let's go to there. And then let's troubleshoot what it's saying here. So I'm doing some light knocking, 3%. That's not good. Let's lower that just a little bit for the compression. Yeah, let's see here. Can I raise the rev limiter higher? No. Conrad's complaining. So I'll do 7,900. Let's see here for timing. Maybe just a little. Yeah. The 0.6. Let's see if I can make the exhaust a little bigger. No, that makes it worse. Restricted. Let's see. Nope. Hmm. Let's see what happens if I put reverse flow in there. None. None. Straight through. Yeah, reverse flow is better. So let's see what it sounds like now. pretty cool. That sounds much angrier and more aggressive and sporty. So yeah, with this real quick optimization, uh, we got this engine to rev much higher and we got some more power out of it. Instead of like 120, we got an extra 30 horsepower and about 10 foot-pounds of torque, so that should allow it to go faster. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm uh, going to be doing. I'm going to try to make this truck go fast with an inline 3. Why is it not Oh, I have to select a trim? Really? Yeah, I'll select that, of course. And put on those wheels. It, this paint looks really nice. I actually think uh, I might actually not change the paint on this, because this red 
this looks so good for an inline three sport truck. So the fixtures are optional in this game, except for the grill, because you need cooling, obviously. Let's put on something a little, nah, that's too old. Let's do something a little bit more modern than that. Let's put on something, uh, there's just so many options. Let's try, yeah, let's try one of these and put those there. I'm not a good artist or designer, but I, I am willing to learn and stuff. I just, uh, just doing this as a video just to show you what it's like. Hmm. Okay. So we did that. And let's get some grill. Uh, so there's a lot of categories you can do as well. I just did the headlight. I selected the rear because of like, oh, we should probably get some brake lights on this thing. So a lot of different choices. Let's put something ridiculous like these. <laughs> I like it. It's so silly. It's good. Let's do something a little bit fun here, shall we? There. <laughs> oh my god. That's just... Oh my god. If I saw this coming down the road. Oh man. that That's just, just terrible. But it's funny at the same time. God. I, I just can see it now in the comments section going like, What are you doing? Why are you putting these headlights on an unrealistic truck? You're supposed to be realistic. Nope. Not in this case. I'm not going for realism. I'm going for fun. Although, I'm trying to make it a little bit realistic here. I don't really need a big grill for aerodynamic reasons. I just need one. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta see what this looks like. Okay, well, I need to make these headlights. You know what? To fit the modern car design meme, let's make these headlights really small and really long. Because that's the in thing to do now with car styling. To make the headlights small as possible so you cringe. Yeah, maximum cringe. That style. <laughs> I don't know why people find that kind of look attractive for a car. I really don't get it. Let's put on some old... While we're going on the topic of like, dude, why are you making this <laughs> car? Let's, let's put on a really big door handle right there. Yeah, totally 50s. That's what it looks like right here. You walk up to the car and you get a totally 50s thing. It does mirror it. You can also do like single trim as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's masterful art. This is pure art. All right, let's go to the next section. All right, so drive type. Uh, well... Could make it rear-wheel drive. Let's make it all-wheel drive, because all-wheel drive is everything these days. And plus, I think that would fit the truck better. And, hmm. For the gearbox, let's do uh, advanced automatic with the highest amount of speeds, because... Oh, wait, what's up about conventional? No, you only can do nine speeds, really. Alright, well, advanced it is. And let's make the top speed... Yeah, let's go 155. And for differential, we just do manual walker with the rear weight balance of, yeah, 35.65. And, <laughs> yeah, the tire type, I forgot, this is something a little bit different. Back then, they all were radial when I first played this game. You now have the choice of ancient technology or modern technology. Obviously, radial is the way to go. Let's make it a uh, hard, long life for that. And let's see how tiny I can get these... <laughs> oh my god, 10 inch rims, yeah, uh, let's do that, you know what, the heck, let's make it LA wheels, and the tire diameter, let's make that bigger so we have more traction, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, this is ridiculous, alright, let's put on for the brakes, let's put on, uh, uh let's put vented disc, two piston, because I'm not going to need a lot, and on the rear, we put solid disc, two piston, maximum brakes. Let's make it 60, and the brake balance towards the front a little bit there for safety. And for the under tray, let's do an off-road skid tray with some co automatic cooling flaps, so we make it a little more efficient. How much airflow do we need? Cooling capacity. Oh, actually, I need a little bit more than I thought. Yeah, let's do that. And then for the interior, we'll just do it standard with uh, 
a standard infotainment system so that at least they're not bored to death. And for power steering, yeah, electric, because that's modern. Let's have the latest uh, ESC plus LC. Yeah, traction age, launch control, and electronic stability. Let's do standard. Yeah, let's do advanced 2010s. We want to make this truck safe. We want it to have some safety, you know. And for the springs, I do, you do standard. What's the difference between standard? Actually, progressive is better. So let's do that with standard gas monotune. And the sway bars, we'll just make it oh, semi-active, off-road, active. Let's try off-road. Let's do the default tune of normal and raise the ray height, ride height a little bit. Whoops. Let's go to the panels here and see <laughs> what the brakes are like. All right, let's see here. Oh boy. Well. It looks like this idea actually could be working. So let's lower the rear tires just a little bit. Drivability is pretty high. That's actually pretty good. Because usually my drivability ranges are never this high. Which is a good thing. See there's power split. Hmm. I guess I could make the brakes just a little bit um, more efficient. But I can't lower them anymore. I guess I could go to like a one piston. And then, uh, the rear wire tires are wide. Oh, alright, I guess I could lower that more. I didn't know I could lower them even more. <laughs> the rear tires are very high profile. Uh, no, we're going to 10 inch rims. And the power distribution, well, I can modify that real quick. I guess you could do that. What's the actual potential top speed? Oh, well, I guess I'd lower it to 150 just for a little more acceleration. Because I don't think it's going to really reach 150. Well, why is it? Let me do that. And then the spacing, make it a little bit shorter, I guess. Yeah, it can make it a little bit more narrow spread. There we go, do 35. All right, so let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to do? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going through the menus here. Alright, and then we'll sign off on this project. So, this is basically the breakdowns of the stats real quick here. And you can take it on the virtual test track, which it looks like right here. This is like in 2D for automation. On the next episode, I'm going to take this to BMG. So, I'll be saving this build. And, let's see here. Manual save. Yeah, I definitely want to save it. And see if it'll allow me to save it. Alright, so let's hit export to another game. Yeah, there we go. Export car to BNG. There we go. And while it's doing that, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first episode of automation. Next episode, I'm going to be driving it into BMG and do some car testing. It's going to be really fun. Um, I'm also looking for ideas and stuff, so maybe the community can uh, ask what car to build, and I'll build it and drive it in BMG. And I also cover other games too, such as War of Tanks, War Thunder, and JWAPI. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.